So this is how I, I met Dean Castanovo and uh, how we started playing together. Um, a friend of mine, Kip Doran, a guitar player from the Evil Genius Band and a uh, lifelong friend, uh, saw this kid, Dean, at this club called Eli's downtown Portland. And uh, he said, man, you guys got to go there. And Jay Reynolds from the band Malice was living at my house at the time. Yeah, right here in this very basement. And uh, so we all went down to this place called Eli's. And uh, it was like six people there <laughs> that, were, that weren't in the band. And uh, Dean's drums were so big that uh, he had this huge 12 by 12, 12 feet by 12 feet drum riser made out of plywood and uh, two by fours <laughs> and covered in carpet. I mean, he had Neil Peart's, pretty much Neil Peart's drum set. On this drum stage, it took up the entire stage except for a couple of feet. So the other guys, Rick Bartell on bass and Jacques Moe on guitar, this is the band called The Enemy. They had to stand on the dance floor. And I mean, they played, they played covers of all these, you know, that were normally really boring covers like Shoot Shoot by uh, UFO. Dean did double bass through all that stuff and uh, just blew my mind. And he sang the whole thing. He was the lead singer and the drummer. The guy was amazing. So Jay, Jay was putting the band Malice together at the time. The Wild Dogs wasn't really a band. We were just recording for a recording studio, but uh, as, a, as a school for the engineers. Jay asked Dean to uh, play on the Malice demos, and so he did that. But you see, the next day, it was Dean's 17th birthday, and he invited me down to, hey, man, come on down. I'm having a birthday party. When I got there, hey, can you go help the guys unload the truck? So, sure. <laughs> Little did I know, I'm taking stuff out of this 20-foot box truck, and it's all pretty much all drums and cases and the drum riser. Because <laughs> Dean's dad owned a, a carpet store, so they used the carpet store truck for to haul the gear around, and uh, which was pretty cool, man. Uh, you know, this band, The Enemy, had uh, opened for Fog Hat and uh, Bloister Cult and uh, in arenas, and that's that was like you know. So he was destined to be in arenas for his whole life. Um, we go and do a, a, a demo session at uh, Ace Tunnel Sound. With Zach Zachariah, he's Robert Cray's guitar guy. And uh, we do the songs with James Neal on, on vocals and me on bass and Kip on lead guitar and Jay on lead guitar and, and Dean on drums. And, like, we just, you know, learned the songs as we did it and just did a demo because he's trying to get uh, Mike Landauer to join the band who didn't really think James was sane enough to do anything after rolling in dog poop at the Ravers record release party, which I've told a million times. And uh, <laughs> still a funny story today. Comes back in after being outside for a minute, completely stark naked and covered in uh, poop. <laughs> Very organic, you know. Jay asked him to join Malice and move to L.A., and he didn't want to do that. I mean, the kid, the guy was a kid, right? I got a call from Dean a little bit later, said, hey, man, I want to come and jam with you guys. And he knew Black and Blue when they were a movie star, and uh, he knew that all these bands were moving to L.A., and we had no drummer. And uh, we weren't really looking to be a band. The other guys, Jeff and Danny, were in cover bands and uh, making good money, and uh, why would they want to do this? So I said, yeah, I'd love you to come over. <laughs> Dean got onto Jamie St. James' drum kit and totally destroyed it. He broke the bass drum pedal, the footboard, in half. And it was a pretty heavy-duty one, a ghost pedal, if you know what that is. He punched the bass drum beater through the head. Uh, he wore all the heads out. He, I mean, he literally broke this thing, <laughs> this perfectly drum set, uh, perfect drum set that was not perfect anymore. He broke the heads. He crashed all the cymbals. And this was all in, like, 22 minutes. <laughs> we didn't even get through. We got through the five songs, I think. And then he couldn't play anymore because... <laughs> The drums were in, you know, pieces. And he left, and then Jeff said, well, he's, he's too fat. He was a big guy, and uh, he's too young. He was a kid, and he's too hyper. And, um, and he overplays. He plays too much drums. He's, you know, we need a Ringo guy, and uh, we're just not going to be able to control this guy. It's like... 
he sounds like the perfect guy I would want in a band because the guy is, he's just that guy that's got, the one guy you come across in your lifetime that's like, you know, you know where he's going. Oh, my God. 